All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Io Ke'ehu, and I have with me the owner from Westside Striking, Michael Talalotu. Yes, uh, thank you for having me. Ah, thanks for coming on, Mike. Michael. Um, we were just talking off camera. It's like kind of being kind of nervous and starting up and everything. So, hey, just start throwing punches. Just start going at it, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the best, that's the best way I feel to jump into something new. Just yeah. get right in. Yeah, because you, you've never done a podcast or no, on camera did. talk like this. <laughs> Nothing like this. So just to jump right in. Oh, I mean, what, what got you on? Is it, is it Timmy? Yeah, Timmy, Timmy kind of mentioned it to me. It's, he asked me if I was interested in doing a podcast. Said, yeah, I'm gonna get my kids and my um, club out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Timmy. Timmy, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for providing us uh, good guests here at Hawaii Real. And uh, yeah, so Westside Striking. You were telling me that um, you really focus on bringing the kids in and, and getting them off the streets and teaching them correct ways how to how to do things and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to teach them, especially to be humble, mm-hmm. be good. Um, people in the community yeah so that's, that's the first thing i try to teach them so that's how to bring them in off the streets and if they want to pursue this career in fighting hopefully i can help them in that direction yeah so, so you you yourself was a professional fighter in your youth yeah well i didn't fight professional but i fought amateur i'm an amateur champion like three times and i fought on a dennis alexio card a lot way back so if you guys came to see Came to watch Dennis fight. That's I was probably on. I was most likely on that card with all the wine eye boys. Yeah. So Dennis Alexio, how was um how was fighting on the same card as him? I was really excited. Really excited. Because he was a famous, world famous. Yeah, he's a heavyweight road champion. Eh? So that that was the that was probably one of the best times in my life fighting then. Where was the yeah. craziest place you fought? Oh, in Bosnia. You I f- I didn't fight in Bosnia, but the craziest. Uh, was all in Hawaii I fought oh, okay. I'll let the blaze out but then you you take your kids and you travel all over yeah the, the farthest place the craziest place I, I would say would be in Bosnia last year I took three of my fighters who went to um, the Waco World Championships in um, Bosnia so that, was, that was really exciting so that I could take my kids or my fighters off of this um, rock that's insane like you have these kids from Waianae yeah going all the way out to Bosnia yeah how was it out there? Was it like still war torn? Yeah, it was, it's pretty much still. I guess I don't know if you can say like a third world country or yeah, something yeah. like that. But yeah, as we was driving down the street, I was looking at the, um, the buildings and you could see like the fifty cal. Like I was telling you earlier, you could see the fifty cal bullets in a lot of the buildings. I like, oh, what is all that? And then somebody told me, oh, that oh sorry, that had the um, what you call it? that? There was that war with um Serbia like twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, and then. They was telling me the stories about what happened. That's why I got all these bullet holes in, in the building. Just, I was like, wow, I was just tripping out. And then we went to this place called the Tunnel of Hope. They called it the Tunnel of Hope because it was like a tunnel underneath the airport that that the, um, the U.S. was kind of like helping um, Bosnia, giving them supplies, trying to help them fight Serbia. So they used that tunnel to um, shuttle the supplies to back and forth or wherever they had to take them to Bosnia, to the Bosnian people to help them fight Serbia. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. how was that experience for your fighters, for your kids? Oh, it was a real good experience for them. They really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed it with them, you know, that I could take them, that we could all enjoy that place together. So that was really, really good. So yeah. um, what are the kinds of things that you like to teach your kids? And what ages and stuff like that do you start from? Well, I usually start my kids, like, from 8 years old and up. And then I just like, I like to teach them how to strike, actually. They'll be the boxing, kickboxing and stuff like that. And then especially, like like I said earlier, to be good people in the community, you know. That's, that's one of the most important things. Be humble. Do you find that you get, like, the troublemakers more? Or do you get, like, kids that uh, maybe don't know how to fight? Maybe they're getting bullied or anything like that? Or what's the type of child that you're getting in? Uh, well, this. I, I've been getting, a, I kind of was, I've been getting like a mixture of all of them, of all types of kids coming from all kinds of backgrounds, you know, and, and I really enjoy when you get to, when you get to first see them, how they are, and then after working with them for a little while, then you see how they're changing you because of your influence, what you're doing in their life and, and what you're teaching them. And then you kind of see them change 
Like a lot of kids, they come to me, and they're very sheltered at home. They didn't do no sports, nothing at all in their life, and just they come to boxing, the first sport they ever did. You know, and, and that's that's my most proudest thing. I mean, one of the most things I enjoy the most. I see where they came from. They, no friends or anything, no sports. They have no um, agility or anything, and see how they progress and stuff like that. And I just sit back and like, wow, I just feel good about that. You know, see see where they are today. Because I have kids that for, they never did do any sports. They from the first day they was with me, and then they're like they're they're ranked in a, in the nation in boxing now. Nice, yeah, like nice. in the top ten. So I'm like, wow, you know, and I feel good about that for them. So it's like you're finding these diamonds in the rough kind of thing, where you're like. Yeah, and I'm kind of bringing them out of their shell, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? So I'm really happy about that to see them. Like, hey, they're real, they're talkative now. Before they, they don't talk to nobody. They don't even look you in the eye when they first come. So that's interesting. So you're building like their confidence and stuff yeah. too. Yeah, bringing them out of their shell. Huh? So that, that that's really good. I really enjoy that. Do you find that that translates not just in fighting in their fighting uh, life or aspects, and it translates into like their schoolwork and their, you know, going off and into the the workforce and stuff uh yeah yeah i find that 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 all translate it all, pretty much all sports it all translate into your real life situations you know so but with their their grades and stuff that's 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 a must for me because i always check in their grades they all they always got to be up to par you know what do they got to bring to you uh i gotta be at least passing grades you know yeah 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 if they're even if they're passing grades i still let, let them know hey you can do better than this yeah Come on, you know, don't be, don't just settle for what you have, you know, because you you always can do better. I always always push them to do better, you know. I don't want to, I don't want them to just settle. Yeah, because when you yeah. settle, you stop growing. Yeah, yeah, you, and you be left behind. Yeah, you get left behind, you know. So that, that's why I always say, hey, you always can push, even if they do really good, man. I tell them I'm proud of them. Hey, you can always do better than this, you know. So I'd never be satisfied. Yeah, never be satisfied. Yeah. Always striving for more. Yeah, I think like kids, a, a lot of adults that I've seen, they, they don't take that to heart. And they think that they, they've gotten to a certain point where they have a decent job and a decent living and a decent household. And then they just kind of stay. But yeah. they never think about like doing more than that when they have like the potential. Yeah, you think everything, oh, that's good enough. That's good yeah. enough. Yeah, it's enough. No, it's, it's not. It's not, you know. It's not. It's not. You guys uh, do adults also? Yeah, um, I train adults just to first. Um, yeah, I train adults, and I train some fighters, professional fighters. I just help them out, you know, with the striking. If they want the help, uh, I'm there for them. All they gotta do is reach out to me, and yeah, some of the adults they just come for the cardio. Mm. They like the cardio stuff, so I say, yeah, come, let's let's get going. Well, how is the the pandemic and everything been for your, your business? Um, well, it's, it's been actually, to be honest, I haven't slowed down. I just went right through it. And I've been fortunate enough to not have people sick because we always like, we always follow the, the protocol. Like, we're always sanitizing and stuff. They're always washing their hands, stuff like that. So, But for some of the kids, it's kind of hard for them because that's the worst thing you can do for a fighter is to be an inactive uh, mm. to just sit and do nothing so that's that's why i push through right through the pandemic because i don't want my kids to just sit there and do nothing because they're gonna balloon up they're gonna gain weight yeah they're gonna get out of shape and then when time to get back into shape oh they're not gonna like get that they're not gonna like put in that hard work again now they, now we just gotta maintain because because we're right through it's like here we talk about the COVID nineteen. It's like the COVID fifteen, where like they put on fifteen pounds during COVID. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know. I was working out plenty before, and then after COVID hit, I stopped working out. So I dropped. I I lost a lot of weight. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you a lucky guy then. I don't know about that. It was all like good weight that I lost. So. <laughs> what are the famous professional fighters or big name fighters that you've worked with? Well. Some of them, um, one of them is the biggest one I could say is like Yancey Madaris. I've been working with him for about a month with his striking and stuff. And um, Zaxin Kamaka, he's been coming to me. So that's probably the two. I helped out some other guys, but um, maybe like Shaden Leoloa, like that. Yeah, it's probably the most famous guys, I guess. 
What do you find like as far as like striking ability? What is like maybe there's no secret. I know you, you're talking about before off camera, like it's just repetition, it's just practice and stuff like that. But is there a technical aspect that you try to teach that you can share? Something small. Mm. I mean, you like to. How do you hit harder? How do huh? you punch harder? Oh, you do a punch. No secret. All the fighters, or most fighters know, all the good fighters know, you you punch with the hip. You punch with the hip, yeah? That's where your power will come from, your hip. Just some, turning some, and snapping the hip. Yeah, just punching with the hip. Somebody, um, If you're lucky, you're born with natural power. Mm -hmm. You don't have to turn that hip, too much technique, because you already got that natural power. Or that heavy hands, as, like, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys do anything special to work the hips? To get the hips like stronger, mm -hmm. to, to lead into the punch? Yeah, there's there's a couple exercises that we we do to help the kids. We, we like to work the core too, mm. a lot in the core, stuff like that. So, and, and, and like the repetitions, like we said, uh, just yeah. keep turning that hip, turning that hip. What about the fist? Is there like a a way to hold the fist or a way to put the thumb, tuck the thumb? Oh, well, the thumb, like, yeah. Just you know, like we like to. There's only only one way to hold your thumb here, when you punch. Mm -hmm. Put your thumb just like this. How I'm showing you. By your first knuckle, yeah, on your fingers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't mind the kind, the fingernails. Yeah, you got fingernail yeah. polish. Yeah, <laughs> I got uh, granddaughter this time. The crash dummy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you got a granddaughter, man. Yeah, you gotta do what they want you to do, man. Yeah, yeah. For any of the listeners out there that have never fought or never thrown a punch before, um, what kind of advice would you give them if they're thinking about getting into a fighting class or a striking class? Oh, it's a lot of, I mean, not everybody's born to be a fighter, you know? And if you want to try, the best thing you do is get in there and see if you like to get hit. If you, you can handle being hit, yeah. I guess that's, that, that's an important factor right there. Yeah. Like you have to be able to, you have to be comfortable being hit. Yeah, because you know, I don't care who you are. If you think you're not going to get hit, you're going to get hit. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets hit, you know? And, and if you can handle that, then eh, then you got a shot of being a fighter. You know, that's just one aspect. If you can handle being hit, then yeah, that's one thing. You, I mean, you can handle being a fighter. You, you're going to be hit because you're going to get hit no matter what. I don't care who you are. <laughs> There's no way around it. Yeah. yeah. yeah I guess it's an important aspect that you never really hear a coach thing. It's like, hey, yeah, you should be able to punch. You should be able to kick. But like you just said, you should be able to handle getting hit in the mm -hmm. worst of times. Yeah. Yeah. And then keep fighting through that. Like mm -hmm. not just give up after the first hit. Yeah. You get hit in the mouth. Yeah. Don't and, stop. And you got to know inside, I mean, you got to have that heart. Huh? Yeah. You got to have that heart. Because if you don't have that heart to push through it and, and, and to work through that being hit, and some, a lot of times you can get dazed. You can be hit hard. You, you, your leg's going to go, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you can get up from that and, and still fight through it and still finish the fight, then you'll be all right, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how many uh, members do you guys have? Uh, I have like about... A day, maybe up to 30 kids, 20 to 30 kids a day. Seven days a week, you were saying, yeah? Yeah, seven days a week we go. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Where are you guys located at? Um, we're located at, um, in Waianae, um, behind the Waianae Post Office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we located upstairs in that, the building upstairs. You guys find a lot of new people coming in uh, day to day, or is it just mostly like the same kind of kids that have signed up? Well, every week we got new kids. Oh, wow. Every week we got new kids coming in. Some kids just fall off. You know, maybe this wasn't for them because mm -hmm. we don't. Uh, what do you call? It? It's not easy. It's not if you don't want. If you can't put in the work, then you're not gonna last. So this is not like Zumba class. Yeah. This is no. There's toughness to it. Yeah. And, and my class, we just go full throttle. We go full throttle. There's no easy breaks. There's no uh, rest. I mean, there is rest periods, but there's no easy days. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't believe in easy days. It's like what the Navy SEALs say, yeah, the only easy day was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yesterday. Have you found, like, any of your uh, students over the years? Oh, how long have you been doing this? Um, well, I've been coaching for, like, the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I started my own gym, like, the last, shucks, maybe four years now, three, four years. Yeah. So fairly, fairly recent then. Yeah. As far as, like, your own gym. Mm-hmm. What what started you wanting to do your own gym instead of just coaching at someone else's? Um, I just I I just wanted to do things my way. So I mean, like just pretty, I'm pretty sure that's how everybody else started their own gym because they just wanted to do things their own way. Mm -hmm. 
and and that's basically what, um how I started my gym or why I started it. Because that brings you into the fold of being a businessman. Yeah, no, I guess so. Because I never did think about it like that. Yeah. I just, all I think about is just training the kids. That's how I think about. Mm-hmm. I don't think about it as a business. I, I, I the only thing I think about is just training the kids. That's how I think about it. That's all. But you still have to do all the the paperwork and the. Yeah, I let my parents taxes. Do that. <laughs> yeah, I let my parents do that. We are a nonprofit. That's why. Oh, okay. We are a nonprofit. So. I had I let the parents handle pretty much handle all that paperwork stuff. Mm-hmm. Where's the where's the future of this uh gym going? Are you gonna stay there? Are you gonna look to be a bigger in ten years? Yeah, I'm looking to expand actually trying to get um funding to get a bigger building so I can handle um have just a nice facility mm-hmm. actually. I mean, uh, right now we're using um, a good friend of mine, Doug Armal. He let me use his gym in the daytime. That's the gym we train at. That's the um, West Wall MMA. Shout out to them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, just looking for get our own gym actually. Yeah. So just trying to put some funding together and get our own gym. You're a coach. You're a teacher. You're a mentor. Mm-hmm. You know. So in the back of your mind, what? Yeah. What do you want? The world to remember you as? Was it, uh, well, somebody that would would always give back, you know, to the kids. Because to me, that's that's our future. Yeah? So that's, that's what I uh, pretty much would like the world to remember me by. Somebody that would always give back. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a, that is a deep question because I never did really think about it. Because you are. You're, you're changing lives of... Dozens and dozens of people. Yeah. Yeah. For the better. Yeah, hopefully for the better. Yeah. Yeah, that just kind of, that's things, those kind of things I never did really yeah, pay too much attention about. Because you're super humble, that's why. Yeah. I'll just, tell the truth, I didn't even think about all that. Yeah. Yeah. What, what is my purpose or anything like that? I just I like to just train kids, be a mentor to them much as possible hopefully it's something positive and eh? they're gonna remember hey if i could be do something good in their life at least one thing you know and i know later on in life they're gonna remember me hey the coach somebody hey, he did this for me you know mm-hmm. and hopefully they can pass that on to somebody else do you guys does your gym have like a a, a motto or anything yeah we just train hard fight easy <laughs> train hard fight easy yeah so we always say, train hard, fight easy. So the harder and harder you train, by the time you get to the fight, the fight should be easier than all the training that you guys have done. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because when you train, you got to train like two hours a day. The fight doesn't last no two hours. Yeah. Because after, after we train hard two hours, then we still got to run for like three miles every day. So I, always try make, I always make training tougher than a fight for mm-hmm. my kids. It has to be. There's no other way around it. That's a good lesson for them to learn in life, yeah? Because mm-hmm. you were also saying that their grades have to be up. Mm-hmm. And you could say that, you know, going to school and learning and, you know, having your mind in the right place is training for life also. Yeah. So yeah, schooling is going to be harder than actual getting the job and working sometimes. Mm-hmm. Make that training hard so that your life is easy. Yeah. Um, what was the most difficult aspect of training your kids or what was the most difficult ch- child or experience that you had while while coaching kids oh when they, when they don't i don't like mentioning it they ain't no their name went in, uh, <laughs> but when i find out there that you know uh, their kids are the size so they're gonna make they always gonna make bad choices yeah i mean they're gonna continue to make bad choices because they're still growing yeah but some of them they don't they I found out that they got into, they experimented with alcohol, <laughs> mm. alcohol and, or, or the vaping and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and they started to be a little bit uh, deceiving, you know, to their parents. And then the parents call me or they call my wife to tell me what, what they did, what the kids did. And, and I said, oh, when I see these guys, I just like wring their neck, you know? Yeah. Because uh, cause I, I only like the best for them, mm-hmm. you know? 
And I, when I find out that, I talk to him. I said, well, why? You know, why? And then they got no words. I mean, they cannot have, they cannot explain because they don't like to say it. Oh, I just want it for them. You know, they mm-hmm. don't like, I guess they don't like disappoint me or the parents. But I asked them, why, why do you guys do that? Why do you guys have to do that? And then they, they just have no questions or no answers for me. And so that's, that's part of the, the most hardest part, I guess, for me is when they disappoint me, you know. And, and they know they disappoint me because, and I just, I just look at them and I say, man, why? But then they, after a while, they, I guess they feel bad because they come to me and they tell me, coach, sorry. They tell me sorry because I, I will disappoint you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I say, oh. to me, I kind of know that. I kind of feel like that uh, I got I got through them. Then if they apologizing and they realize that disappointed, you know, so that's that's probably the hardest part going, and when when they don't train hard, <laughs> you know, that's probably the hardest parts for me. Yeah. Do you find like uh, when a child comes through and finally um, apologizes to you that that's when it's actually gotten through to them? Yeah. As opposed to like a child that's like ah f this I don't like this mm-hmm. and walks away. Yeah. Well. I, yeah, when they do that, when they apologize to me and stuff like that, then uh, I kind of know that, uh, okay, I got to them somewhat, you know. But then uh, as for them to say F this or whatever, uh, that that not going to fly with me. All right. That that don't happen in my gym, you know. If they're going to talk like that, then I send them home. No come back because mm-hmm. they don't respect. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and that's one thing I don't allow. I don't allow disrespect in my gym. So. They, they gotta have respect because it all falls back <laughs> onto the parents. Yeah, it falls back on the parents. Mm-hmm. That's where they, that's where they learn this from. And you say respect. Are you talking about just respect to you as the coach and mentor, or do you talk about respect for all the other people inside the gym? Everybody, yeah. even for when we go outside of the gym, people in the gym, people when we go out in public, how you carry yourself in public, you always be respectful to people because you, it re- it reflects to the club. Yeah? Uh, how um if, if they find out they do something wrong or you represent you from West Side striking, you know, and it all falls back on me and the gym. So I always tell them carry yourself good no matter where you go because everybody somebody always watching, you know, somebody mm-hmm. always watching and then they're gonna say oh you you fight for West Side striking and that's how you act, and then everybody come it looks bad on me. So that's how I always preach that to them. Somebody always watching. Yeah, because it can always come back and bite you guys, right? Yeah. Because you don't want other people to have, or other schools or, you know, anything else, other gyms that, you know, they see, you know, West Side striking the name and they attribute that with, you know. I guess, troublemakers. Yeah, yeah, troublemakers, you know. I don't know how to put it, like gang, yeah. gang banger kind of stuff or just, you know, people that don't have disrespect, you know, that have that tough man mentality without the humbleness mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'm pretty sure all i'm pretty sure most of the gyms is like that yeah they don't like the on anything bad reflect on a gym or, or, or their coaches yeah so that's that's part of one of the big things me and my parents we st- we really strict on that mm-hmm. you know yeah and i was asking you earlier is like uh you don't have any hobbies or anything like that right you know you don't surf you don't boogie board no. you just just coach yeah just, just coach coach. devote Devoted your... I had to devote all my time to the kids. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I do. I just work and come home, train the kids. That's it. That's all I do every day. <laughs> and that's hard to find, like, someone that has that kind of devotion to, to something. Especially something where it's like you're mentoring kids, you know. So that's... that's Kudos to you, man. Super, super impressed. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it is... You got to find that special person that, that's willing to do what I do. Every day, and we do it. I do it for free. I do it for free. I don't charge nobody nothing. You know, get some get people out there that does it for free every day, just like me, but very few, few and far between. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, most people are just they're more concerned about themselves and how they're going to make their you know their mortgage payments, their bills, and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you know, they don't necessarily put the time out there to to mentor and teach other kids yeah. that aren't their own kids. Yeah. Yeah, especially if that's not their own. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I imagine you don't watch too much television if oh. you're training seven days a week. Yeah, well, <laughs> I hardly watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I watch a lot of TV. You watch, <laughs> <laughs> watch a lot of Netflix. <laughs> yeah, we were talking. There's that show, uh, The Kingdom, on Netflix. I was like, yeah, I gotta watch that. It's like, is there's this one part? You know, we were discussing this off camera about um, one of the fighters just before his fight. He's getting ready. He's getting his uh, hands taped up and everything, and then he goes into the bathroom. And he's like losing his mind. He's having a nervous breakdown before the fight. He's saying that, you know, he's not ready to fight or he's not a good fighter and he doesn't deserve to be here. And his coach has to come in and like hop him up and, you know, start hollering at him, yelling at him to get him to come out of the bathroom to go out in the cage and fight. It's like, is that kind of stuff happen? Maybe, maybe. Um, I haven't seen it to that extent, but there's a lot of people that, that can handle that, that pressure that of fighting performing in front of a lot of crowd and mm -hmm. a lot of people and and i see people that they just get on over just start walking around and start shaking and trying to hug themselves out there but that's the to me that's the best feeling in the world when if you can handle that from the locker room they walk from the locker room to the fight to the ring or the cage some people some fighters know what i'm talking about if not most of them or all of them but that's the best feeling in the world Cause that's the, that's your moment to to show everybody what you can do. That's how I looked at it when I was fighting. Cause when when a couple of times when I was fighting in Dennis Alexio's card, I come out of the locker room and in the blazer, and there was only standing room only, man. But people just yelling rah rah cheering. I come out of the locker room, I look like that. Oh, I just get chicken skin because I look home. Oh. I said, look at all these people, and I, I thought I talking to myself. I said, look at all these people. They're gonna come watch me fight. Now I'm gonna show them what I can do. And if you can handle that walk from there to there, that pressure, you're going to be all right. And then, then, well, for me, there was no better high than that. You know, that was the best feeling. So, yeah, I would say, you know, have some people, got some people out there or some fighters that when that time for perform, that pressure is just too much for them, you know? Yeah, you're coming out that door and you, you just, it's not just hearing the crowd, it's feeling the, the vocals and everything coming yeah. back at you, yeah? Yeah. It's intense. <laughs> and you know it's for you. Yeah, it's for you, man. Good and bad. Like yeah. Some people booing you, some people cheering you. But Take the good and the bad. Yeah, really. yeah. It's, All it, the same. It's still like that native wine. It, it's yeah. that mana coming at you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, that was the best. That's the best feeling. Do you miss that kind of feeling? Oh, yeah, I miss that. I get that feeling every time when my kids go for fight. I get that kind of that feeling again yeah. every time my kids fight. So that's, that's good. That's one other um what do you call benefits for me yeah i would say when when because i coach you know i'm not actually in the ring but that's that's like a product of my my work that's that's how i look at it i guess yeah because you're taking it off from like the coaching's point of view now yeah do you yeah. corner do you still corner people oh yeah yeah always always go corner my fighters nice yeah yeah so you're right up in there right <laughs> you know? I, yeah almost in the mix again <laughs> Yeah, that's the progression of getting old. Yeah. <laughs> go from yeah. go from fighter or athlete to, you know, coach and Coaching. mentor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, you, then you come uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and then grandpa and then pops. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what do the kids call you? Uh, they call me uncle or coach. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm at the uncle stage almost. <laughs> Permanently uncle already. <laughs> Yeah, because you got the big white uh, Fu Manchu yeah. beard going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what other kind of uh, memorable aspects of fighting do you have that you would like to impart on on children? You see, like coming out from the hallway, um, the locker room, and hearing that uh, that crowd for you. Is there anything else? Oh, hey, just the the experience of fighting. I guess that's that's just the whole thing: winning or losing. Just getting in there, cause it's not if everybody if it was easy, everybody be getting in the ring and doing them, you know. Only a special kind of person would go in there and, and take take punches, give punches, you know. Just the whole aspect of that that experience. Yeah, I did that. You know, I did that. I oh, I used to do that, which very few people have done. Yeah, relative to the population of the world, like yeah, very very few people. Especially like, especially to the level that I did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying I did it really high or whatever, but it was, it was, it was really good. I mean, the level I did it was pretty high, actually. Yeah, because you could say that you guys are in the 0.0001% of the world population that's doing something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I didn't think about it like that one. Yeah, like, you're up there. Like, the majority of people aren't fighting. 
majority of people aren't training, and then a majority of people that are training aren't fighting uh, in a cage against other people. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, they're not going on to fight in venues, you know? Yeah. In very, front of very, thousands of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. A very small amount of people are doing that. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I like, guess. oh, yeah, I did do that. <laughs> yeah. Any, uh, before we wrap up, any words of wisdom or anything? If you don't love what you do, man, don't do it. Because you're only going to be half-hearted. You know, you're going to be just going through the motions. You're going to be just wasting everybody's time and yours. So if you don't love what you're doing, whether it's fighting or coaching, don't do it. Find another profession. Yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> that's super deep, and that's yeah. the same things that I tell people all the time. It's like, if you're not doing what you love, why are you doing it? You know, so mm. great, great. Michael, thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good old shout out yeah. to West Side Striking. Yeah. Right on. Mm. All right, everybody. Stay happy, Hoy. <laughs>